The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with your host, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the December 11th, terrific Tuesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for joining me, folks. I absolutely treasure your presence here today, and my outcome is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. So let's go take a look at one of these tools. I love this tool. I love all of these tools here that we use in order to lead an inspired life. This one is called From Success to Failure is But Just One Step. But from failure to success, folks, that is what we call a long road. You know, it's said that within each of us, within each of us is the life we have chosen and the lives we might have led. Think about that for a moment. Think about how that might apply to you. You'll see it's just as true for you as it is for me, as it is for our kids, our friends, our coworkers, everybody that is within our life. Within each of us, folks, within each of us is the life we have chosen and the lives we might have led. Our thoughts, folks, our thoughts and our dreams of what we might have been or might have done, they live within us. The little boy one day may wish to be a fireman, and then on the next day, he might decide that he wants to be a policeman. And maybe a few days later, maybe it's an astronaut. And then perhaps a few weeks later, maybe the little boy says, I'd like to be a doctor. We've all been through that. If you have kids or grandkids, you've been through that. You've seen that. You know that that is true. There are many life possibilities, folks, for each one of us. Success, though, success is finding out which of these possibilities may be most meaningful to you, to each of us out there. How we choose and what we do with our choices, that is what creates the road signs of our journey. And if we follow the right road out there, success can be within us through good times and bad. Success, folks, is a journey. It is not a destination. Why? Why? Because for a destination, that means that your journey is over. So success, no matter whether you've got it now, whether you're striving for it, it's just simply, folks, a journey out there. And when it comes to success, make sure that you give credit and that you give credit and that you help all those folks who have helped you along the way. Something that is sometimes overlooked. Let me share with you a true story as one example of life's journeys out there. In the late 1800s, an important member of Parliament, British Parliament, was hurrying through the rain and the fog of the uh, Scottish countryside to deliver a very crucial speech out there. Now, miles away, miles and miles away from his destination, his carriage was forced off of the road with its wheels plunging deep, axle deep, in mud out there. Now, the driver of this carriage and the horse, they were unable to pull the carriage out of the mud. This speech was so crucial that even the aristocrat, that were the aristocratic Englishman that was, you know, in his formal attire, got out and tried to get this carriage out of there, but to no available. Huh. Then comes this young Scottish lad, this young Scottish farm boy that happened to be driving a team of horses past the distraught Englishman, and he volunteered to help pull the carriage loose. Now, after a huge effort, I mean a huge effort out there, the carriage was finally pulled free. Now, the young boy, he refused to take any money for his help or even for the clothes that had gotten dirty and, quite frankly, had been ripped and torn just simply for the efforts of pulling that carriage out of there. Now, the Englishman asked the boy, he said, what is it that you'd like to be when you grow up? Then the boy said, well, sir, I'd like to be a doctor. A doctor is what I want to be. Well, the Englishman was so grateful for the lad's help. He said, I want to help you. And so he did. Now, as the story goes, fast forward 50 years, more than 50 years later, Winston Churchill became dangerously ill with pneumonia while he was in Morocco. His life, folks, was saved by a new wonder drug called penicillin, which had been discovered a few years, a few years earlier by a Scottish-born physician. Hmm. What was his name? Sir Alexander Fleming. Fleming, folks, was the farm boy who helped the member of parliament. Pretty cool story, isn't it? Well, it gets even better than that. Because the member of parliament that that boy had helped a half century, a half century, 50 years earlier, was none other than Winston Churchill's father, Randolph. How about that, folks? Remember to give credit and to help all that have helped you along the way. Our destiny, folks, it is not 
predetermined for us. We determine our own destiny. Let's go take a look at the destiny here and the journey of the uh, markets as we uh, check in here. We've got the Dow futures trading up about 25 points. ES mini up about three and a quarter here right now. Of course, with fair value, they're looking to pop even higher than that. You've got the NASDAQ futures up 10 and a half points. Russell 2000 really being the lead dog here, the lead horse in the uh, stable, up about four, up about five points, up about six tenths of a percent. King dollar right now, back 24 ticks out at $80.09. Gold not moving much, uh, trading at 17.13. That's down 70 cents, no great shakes out there. Silver though, a little different story, off about seven tenths of a percent, down 25 cents out at 33.12. Light sweet crude, up 27 ticks out at 85. 83. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. The DAX up 43 points right now, still trading above its uh, breakout horizontal area. Maybe it's a, a true move in the DAX. I think not, though. The FTSE is up about eight points, also taking on an area of resistance out there. Over in Asia last night, the Nikkei traded down eight points. The Shanghai was off nine. The Hang Seng up 47 points. If you are listening to us on the radio, maybe your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, we absolutely appreciate you doing that. We are looking at the ES Mini, kind of an ultra uh, in, uh, intraday indicator. We're looking at the 10-minute uh, chart here on my screen. If you're listening on one of those uh, devices, you can always catch an archive of the show on Channel 9. Of course, on those devices, many of you can just simply watch us live on Tiger TV, and you'll see the uh, charts live. If we take a look at the ES Mini, what I have uh, painted in here is a rising price channel. That is what the ES Mini has been traveling in. In fact, right now you've got the ES Mini traveling just above the uh, spike high from the uh, Jobs Friday out there. That spike high on Jobs Friday on the 10-minute chart really coming in during the uh, bar of, of 8.50 in the morning. The high there was 14.22.25, traded out at 14.23.50 out there. Now, just again, if you just take a look at, uh, I can't tell you how these uh, rising price channels work. I don't need to tell you how they work. I just need to show you that they do work and it will help you in uh, managing your trade, especially for an intraday trader. Uh, but uh, whether you're an intraday trader or not, you just simply want to follow along because you want to watch the EKG of the marketplace. Well, this is going to be one of those tools that you're going to want to add to your arsenal. In fact, talk about tools. You know, folks, I try to do a, a live workshop every other Wednesday for each of my uh, clients. And uh, in each of those Wednesdays, now I was sick, as you know, and so we end with the holidays. It makes it a little bit uh, more difficult out there. But uh, I am going to be doing a, another workshop uh, tomorrow. Now, during those workshops, I'm showing indicators and other technologies, other things that I don't really show during, that I don't, uh, not that I don't really show, that I really don't show here during the uh, shows out here. Now, one of the uh, ones, that, one of the indicators that I'm gonna be sharing with uh, clients tomorrow, and you, you too can get access to it. If you've never tried my service, Mastering Probability, you can check it out for, uh, for 30 days, unconditional money back guarantee and just think about the education that you can get there tomorrow i'm going to be sharing with folks an indicator uh, that was really uh, first put out in the market about 15 years ago 15 plus years ago by thomas demark out there it's one of his uh, td combo indicators out there I spent quite a bit of time reading you know i love reading i don't know about you I, well the question i would always ask you is you know i know that each of us feed ourselves the question is what's the last book that you read out there have you fed yourself and not fed your mind? I love feeding my mind out there. And sometimes that means rereading books out there. You absolutely want to make sure that you do that. Yeah, he put out a book, uh, New Market Timing or something like that, I think is a title, about 15 uh, years ago. In fact, this indicator is available on uh, Bloomberg if you have the Bloomberg service for $500 a month. $500 a month, the Bloomberg service, you get the full kit and caboodle for about $1,800 a month. So he thinks pretty highly of his indicators. So does Paul Tudor Jones. That's who he actually developed it for. So tomorrow during my workshop, I'll be sharing that uh, with my uh, clients, uh, how to use it, how to properly use it, how to be able to identify it and track it. doesn't matter what time frame. So if you're interested in that, which you should be, quite frankly. Go sign up for my uh, newsletter service. You can see it underneath, Breaking News, Mastering Probability. Click on my name. Now, not only do you have access to that, folks, quite frankly, you've got access to a whole library, which we're going to, we've put together, we've been working on the index. Uh, we'll have that index done today that will allow you to go to a specific tape because it's like about 25 plus hours or so worth of education out there. And if there's something specific that you're looking for, A, B, C, D, patterns, whatever it might be, expansions, contractions of swing points, 
it's there. It's inside that. Uh, so go check that out. Now, if we take a look at the uh, rising price channel here that the ES Mini is traveling in, really just going back into about the uh, open at around, let's say, 1130 in the morning on uh, the 5th of December out there. You can see how price, and you can see even the spike high tried to spike up. Uh, uh, up out of it, came back in to that rising price channel, tested the uh, bottom out there. That area seems to be the area of support out here on a rising price. You can see now, right now, what the ES Mini did on the 10-minute chart, got into what is called that oversold condition, utilizing that relative strength indicator, getting up to a level of about 80, just a little bit over 80. That gets into extreme territory. And as you know, when you get up there, what is a market going to do? Just like when you go out, if uh, you know if you've ever done it, and you've overeaten. In this case here, the market has overeaten. It has to digest, and the only way to digest is either go work out, which would be a pullback, or just simply let it digest by just simply going sideways. The market's appetite, no different than yours or mine. That is how these indicators work out there. That is the EKG of the uh, system. What do I expect today? I expect we'll see higher prices through tomorrow, maybe Thursday out there, and then we start to see that market correction. 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be right back. It's always better when we're together Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together Well, it's always better when we're together Yeah, it's always better when we're together What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Welcome back, folks. Uh, just a little bit of uh, info on that true story that I gave you about uh, Sir Alexander Fleming. The history books, uh, you know, they, there's, a, there's a discussion about whether or not it was really penicillin that uh, saved Winston Churchill's life when he was uh, over in uh, Morocco. And the reason is this. Now, it was certainly a derivative of penicillin, and it was perhaps the German brand, the German uh, uh, version of penicillin uh, that had actually uh, saved his life. But it was during World War II out there. And so the uh, way that the uh, newspapers reported it, certainly they gave credit to it being penicillin, obviously having been uh, uh, created uh, by Sir Alexander Fleming out there. But just think about how but the rest of the story is absolutely true. There's no no question about the mere fact that it was uh, Winston Churchill, fa his father, Randolph, that was on his way, that got stuck. It was this boy. Uh, that uh, didn't have enough uh, money necessarily to go on to uh, college and become a uh, physician and be a doctor. And thank goodness, you know, that uh, that he did, because he certainly has impacted a lot of people's lives. You know, just think about the uh, flu season, which has hit a number of us. I know that it hit uh, David, I uh, hit myself, and now uh, Larry Pesavento is uh, out with the uh, flu. I spoke with him yesterday afternoon. He does not sound good out there, so we ought to send a little bit of white light and penicillin uh, his way out there. As we come back to these markets out here, popping in the uh, pre-market here, we've got Apple is actually uh, trading up this morning, closing out at 529.82. Last night, right now, trading out at 539. So looking at about a $6 move, $7 move in Apple. You've got uh, Urban Outfitters, URBN, uh, closed at 37 even, Stephen, trading out right now at 38.85. You've got uh, AIG, Closing out at 33.36, uh, trading out at 34.20 right now. To the downside, not a bunch going on. HCA Holdings, uh, 33.87 is what it closed at. It is trading out at 32.78, uh, so, you know, down a buck, uh, a little bit over a buck. You've got Hertz Global Holdings, the uh, car rental company. Uh, they close at 16.21, trading down, looks like about, uh, I don't know, maybe about 70 cents or so, trading out right around the 15.70 area. As we uh, take a look at the uh, futures markets, and what I've got up on my screen is the uh, Russell 2000 uh, futures. I mentioned uh, during the opening segment that the Russell 2000 is the lead uh, horse in the uh, in the carriage pull here of the markets moving higher. What we can take a look at on the Russell 2000, uh, just simply take a look at the trend line it is trying to get back into. Now, it broke through that trend line. This is the trend line, folks, going back to the October 4th lows. That's your first touch point. A trend line different than a channel line like I was showing on the 10-minute uh, chart of the uh, S&P 500 on the ES Mini. Trend line just simply taking the low of either the bar, if you use a bar chart, or if you're using a candle, using the bottom of the uh, wick. And the uh, second wick that you're using here is that June 4th area. Uh, that also happens to tag on the Russell 2000, the lows of August 2nd, 2012, out at the uh, 761.40 level. Once you break 
a trend line, what the markets will do at some point in time is try to get back inside. That is exactly what the Russell 2000 is doing. It simply was in a stalled pattern here for five, six trading sessions, a series of, as you know, if you've been listening in on the show, a series of doji candles here coming in at a resistance area. That has a lot of meaning. Of course, the session has not closed. All that we've seen is we've seen the Russell 2000 reach up and tag that uh, trend line. It has done that here this morning. If you get the Russell 2000 to close back below the November 2nd high, that would be 829.80. Then all that it's done is what it's supposed to have done, and that, folks, would potentially be setting up a, a failure here if you get the Russell 2000 to close above 829.80. What it really sets up is the next test of a resistance area, which is nothing more than the uh, swing point high of October the uh, 17th out there. That would be 841. 80 or so. You don't need to use the exact number, the exact nut out there. That is where the Russell 2000 is trading into. What we can see here on the daily chart, the Russell 2000, let me actually put the actual study panel up on the screen so I can give you the exact uh, number. It's trading out at the uh, 65 level. Uh, 70 is uh, really 65.29. 70 is where you start to really reach the oversold condition, the overeating condition of a market where it needs to start working itself off. Of course, if you take a look at the last times that the Russell 2000 was up there, those were the highs of September 17th. And then what did the market do? Sold out. You can take a look at the highs coming into the July 5th area where the market went ahead and uh, retraced out there. So it is something that you absolutely want to be paying attention to. If we go take a look at the uh, Dow futures, see what the Dow is doing, trading up into its horizontal resistance area, that little X marks the spot. That is where the Dow is headed. It says it wants to move higher, but intraday here needs to work off some of the food that it is eating out there. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Well, it's always better when we're together Yeah, it's always better when we're together in quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. 
at less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. to the races we got the dow up 58 points right now s p up six composite up 20 uh, small caps up four uh the, you got the uh, composite leading the charge on the way up here up seven tenths of a percent right now microsoft up 18 pennies intel up 24 cents google up four bucks and change cisco up 18 cents apple having a, a good morning here up uh, a little over 10 bucks right now, trading out at 540 and change out there. Uh, just behind it, as we said, Urban Outfitters up uh, two bucks and change, uh, AIG up uh, Celadex, uh, Celdex uh, Therapeutics, CLDX up uh, just about 20 cents here. Looks like I'm having a little bit of a, a data feed. Don't know what is going on with that. As we uh, come back here, we're taking a look at the Apple chart. What did Apple do yesterday? Apple, volume wise, what Apple was doing was testing that hammer candle again from November 16th out there. That is where you really had the last real sign of bulls in the stock. That was the low from November 16th. That low was 505.75. The high was 530. Yesterday, you have Apple closing at uh, 529.82. Inside that uh, swing point volume here, uh, lightened up a bit uh, yesterday. 22 million shares going into that hammer candle with 45 million shares. Not enough to uh, break down in there. Can Apple bounce? Oh, absolutely. Apple can uh, bounce here. We'll go put it on an intraday uh, chart time frame. Uh, Apple should find some pretty decent resistance. Now, this would be a bounce here. People could get a little giddy. That would be at the high of December 5th. That would be, excuse me, up at the 569 level. You got a little bit of a gap there uh, between the December 4th and December 5th area. Let's go put Apple on a, I think it's the five minute chart that we have been uh, following and looking at out here. So let's go uh, make sure that I've got all of the uh, live data out here on Apple. Uh, and I do. So we can also see is just simply on this uh, intraday uh, chart out here, Apple getting into that extreme uh, overbought uh, area. It's not exactly there just yet. Could move a little bit higher. But certainly if you were, for example, how do you really use this on an EKG? Well, if you're looking to get into a market or an equity or what have you, are you going to want to buy it when the relative strength indicator is up in that 70 plus level? Or are you going to want to wait for some type of pullback? You're going to want to wait for some type of pullback. You know, you don't have to chase things. And if you've got the opportunity on your charting system, I know that this works on all charting packages that are out there. You want to make sure that you've got a number of different EKG systems uh, that are out there so that you can read the message of the market. This is just simply one of those uh, indicators out there and really helps you to gauge what the uh, market is doing. Let's go take a look at uh, Urban Outfitters. URBN is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go see what is behind this move. It's about a 5% uh, jump here this morning. Maybe they were out with some same store sales numbers. Let's see here. On Urban Outfitters, I don't have any information 
on that, so I don't see anything necessarily behind the move, but let's go take a look at it. Anyways, Urban Outfitters here, let me just refresh my screen, make sure that we are looking at live data out here, and it looks like we are. Urban Outfitters had a, a nice move up, wide price spread and accelerated volume, uh, and looks like that is accurate. Let me just pull this off the side. That sign of strength out here happens to be the day of August 21st, 2012. Take a look at a sign of strength out there, 21 million shares, the uh, gap up uh, from the high of the prior session on August 20th, that was uh, $31.80 out there. Now, the uh, bottom of that gap, that window held. You prefer to see, to have seen the uh, low of August 21st hold, $35.91. That is not the case. It gave way, not with any type of significant volume uh, out here, but it, what it does do, it, it kind of, uh, it doesn't help you because you're really mid-stroke, you're mid-stream here. You want to either see either the gap up candle, the low of that candle be tested on lighter volume and hold, or you want to see it come all the way back to the breakout area on lighter volume. Urban Outfitters doing neither of those. Uh, therefore, right now, what Urban Outfitters is doing, it's going out and it's testing the swing point, the bearish and golfing high out there. That is September 11th, 2012. That has 5.4 million shares. You're trading into Urban Outfitters is trading inside it right now. It's already done 1.2 million shares, so it should have the volume today to try to break out or at least stay with inside this candle. Of course, if you were bullish, if you own the stock, you want to see it take out the 40.65 high uh, because you have volume out there. That would be a nice little breakout. It's also coming back. We're going to put this on the weekly chart here, make it a little bit easier to take a look at. Coming back into the August, uh, I'm sorry, the April 2010 highs, uh, a little bit over 40 bucks. So let's put this on a weekly chart, see what Urban Outfitters is uh, telling us. Uh, take a look at this uh, area here that is holding as a resistance. Uh, you got this, these are where the downdrafts have begun. Uh, let's just draw the uh, line across the uh, screen out here. We can see uh, a kind of a serious area of resistance. Now it's up above it here right now. Uh, this is a weekly chart, so the week is not over. Let's make this a, a dark black line out there. And you could lift it just a little bit higher. You can see here coming back into those April 2010 levels. Now on the weekly chart, that has 16 million shares out there. Through yesterday, about 2.5 million shares. So it's going to have to really, you know, we know it has juice here this morning. Uh, each time, though, it is up at these levels. This is Urban Outfitters. Uh, it has pulled back. Sometimes it's pulled back with a uh, vengeance, either by taking a look at the volume or volume off the top. That's really what it's uh, doing here right now. The volume off the top was in March of 2011 out there. Let's go take a look at uh, HCA Holdings and then Hertz Global, uh, two equities. I only have three that are on my screen here, so I've got some kind of data feed issue. I'll try to resolve that uh, maybe between the two shows out there. So we've got H, uh, let's start with uh, Hertz, HTZ, and see if there's any kind of Hertz in it this morning. Gapping down uh, about 3.5% this morning. That means it's uh, down just about 58 uh, cents. However, let's go take a look at Hertz. Uh, Hertz had a uh, nice little sign of uh, strength out here. So here is a equity that did have a sign of strength and just opposite of Urban Outfitters actually came back into its uh, breakout area. Now, as we take a look at uh, Hertz, what I'm referring to is the uh, breakout session from August 27th. Now, August 27th, it uh, breaks out with 35 million shares. The night before, it had, or the session before, it had gotten up to a high of $13.24. Now, this is not the type of breakout that you like to see. Yes, you had the volume behind the move, but you see this thing, a uh, breakout, maybe it was earnings or an earnings report or something on August 27, 2012. But what you can see is the equity sold off there. That is not the type of breakout that you do like to see. It really gives you a signal that, hey, look out below. I'm probably going to come back and test the uh, breakout area. And that's, in fact, what uh, this equity uh, did. It also gave you that indication uh, that it was going to uh, do that here on the session. Let's just draw a couple lines across the screen. Screen, excuse me, if we'll make this one red. So we can see here on that breakout uh, session on August 27th, as it uh, came down, closed out at uh, 1421, the lowest 1416 of the uh, 27th of uh, August out there. Now, in that next session, it actually tests that low, rejects it, so that's okay. You test it again a few days later on August 31st, so that gives you some type of potential indication that it's going to be a decent breakout. Of course, take a look at this. It never really gets above the high. Uh, now, and I'm talking about on the shorter term, so hopefully you're following along on Tiger TV. Let's make that a, a red line uh, coming across the uh, screen as well. So it never breaks out above that area. Instead, what it does, 
moves down below the original gap up level on September 25th. That says, okay, now you're kind of mid-stroke here. I don't know what it is that you're going to do, and you got to wait for additional information and mostly being patient uh, for it to come back to that uh, large breakout day. Now I'm going to use a, a black line, draw it across the uh, screen out here. You already see the volume uh, on the uh, screen. That is the volume that it's really going against. Well, I'm going to actually put volume down here. Just let's do this. Let's put it against the actual breakout day, which is a nice place to use a uh, measurement because if you come back into that area on light volume, that's giving you really nice symbols out there. As we take a look at this, uh, the breakout day, August 24th, 5.8 million shares. As it comes back in there, 12 million shares on November 11th. That's a little bit too hot. Uh, 5.8 million shares on November 2nd, and then 3.8 million shares on November the uh, 5th out there. Uh, takes off nicely, jettisons out of there on July, I'm sorry, on November 6th with 7 million shares. That's the kind of testing you like to see coming into a uh, breakout uh, session here. Uh, now you've got it trading out at 1569, but of course as it's moved up higher, as it got over that uh, breakout area, you know, it did it on light volume. Simple as that. That uh, day, that session being November 28th, 9 million shares, 9 million shares going against 35 million shares. Says that it's going to come back and at least test that area. Of course, take a look at that huge bearish engulfing candle up at the highs here from May of 2012. So it's got a, a resistance area to work through. That is on Hertz Global. Let's go take a look at HCA out there, HCA Holdings. And that is down about 2.5% here this morning. Uh, let's see if there's any patterns, anything of significance on this. Uh, nothing that I see. Uh, let's take a look at this high volume uh, day. So this makes a high volume high. This does this on the uh, 7th of uh, November, that level 34.16. Uh, you can see that the market pulled back uh, and uh, went back and tested that high volume high. Did it on light volume, 4 million shares on the 7th on Friday. Uh, three and a half million shares yesterday doesn't have enough to, uh, but has not gotten, has not really tested the actual high of that level. 34, 34, 32. Let's see, what did it get up to here? 34, 16. So may want to go back up there and test that as well. Let's go to Pat in Framingham, Massachusetts. Pat, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Oh, good morning. I was just looking at Harmony Gold. I heard you and Tom talking about it the other day, and um, I was gonna—I was wondering if it was going to roll back down. Well, you know, when you take a look at Harmony Gold, one of the things that Tom and I were talking about, you've got really two things here. You've got, obviously, the, the gold equity itself, and then you've got the uh, currency aspect. Uh, you know, with the with the rand out there. So your question is, is this going to pull back? Is that what you're, is that in yeah. essence what, okay. So if, I mean, if it were to pull back here, you know, gapped up by yesterday, volume wise, 2.7 million shares coming into the swing point from November 26th out there. That's its most recent swing point that has 1.5 million shares. Uh, so it is, let me see if it actually, the low of that swing point was uh, $8.05. It closed yesterday at $8.08, closed inside there, but on lighter volume. So the mere fact that it had lighter volume, maybe that gives you the ability, maybe maybe it does uh, pull back here. Are you looking at, what's the, what's the time frame that you're looking at a trade on this? Because that would be the easier way for me to, to maybe help That's direct probably you. Probably a couple of months. A couple of months. So Yeah. Okay, so now we're taking a look at longer term Trade. So let's go take a look at a, maybe a weekly chart out here okay. and maybe a, a monthly chart. So on the weekly chart, this says you, you, you want to hold it for probably at least a couple of months out here. And where I'm going with this is I'm going with this little high volume bar out here on the weekly chart, which is uh, March 25th, 2011. That price range is 1199 to 1468 out there. Uh, that is where it eventually wants to get back up to. And so that being the case, if that's uh, one of your targets, now it's going to have some work, most certainly to get through it. But where you've also got a nice high volume bar out here on the weekly chart from September 21st, that has 27 million shares. That's at the 894 to 910. So I'm just going to write this some scribble some stuff on the paper. 894 to 910, and it's at 807 uh, right now. So that's your first target is going to be that. Your longer term target is going to be the 1199 uh, uh, plus range. So with that being your uh, target, maybe what you might want to uh, consider doing is scaling into this. If it pulls okay. back, you, add, you know, maybe you take a half a position now. 
Okay. You know, or you take a third of a position. If it pulls back, and as far as where this could pull back to, certainly it could, it could come back and test the lows. That would be uh, December 6th area. That would be in about the 747. It's at 808 right now. If I just take a look at what just the average daily range on uh, this equity is, and we're taking a look at Harmony Gold, folks. So I'm just simply going to come to the position size calculator. That's available for those of you that haven't uh, tested that out. On the homepage of TFNN.com, there's a whole video that shows you how to use that. 23 cents is your average daily movement on this equity. It's at 808. So, you know, certainly, you know, maybe coming. So you want to just take a look at some increments to be able to add, whatever uh, fits your uh, trading style or personality. But I think it's, it's worthwhile to take a, a position, a portion of a position here, add to it if it's a winning position. Uh, what I mean by uh, that is if you start coming into the November 7th area with more than 5.3 million shares, because that's a swing point that's got 5.3 million shares, consider even adding at a higher price. So you're going to add either at a lower price or you're going to add to a higher price. You're just going to let it prove itself to you. Is that, okay. with that, but that's if that works for your trading style. Yeah, it does. It oh. does very much. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Thanks for calling. Have yourself a great day. You too. Thanks. You bet. Bye. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside the uh, currency markets out here. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, euro, U.S. dollar. Uh, that obviously having a, a substantial impact on the U.S. dollar index, which is the euro is 57.6% of the weighting structure inside there. Now, the euro here this morning coming into the uh, 7 o'clock uh, session here, uh, making a, a pretty nice uh, thrust from a candle standpoint, but what it was also doing, it was making a 1.272 expansion of swing points. I'm going to go ahead and I'll delete this off of my screen. We'll come back and uh, draw this on here. Well, let me just make sure I delete the right thing. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and delete the uh, this tool here. I'll just simply show you how you two using the home game could identify. Just come up to the uh, swing point high on the 30-minute uh, chart. You're looking at about uh, 9.30 in the evening at about a price point of 1.29. 717 all the way down to the low that was put in at 9 o'clock in the morning. You'll see 1.272. You'll see that little horizontal area going across my screen. That is a normal area to rest. 877-927-6648. Dow up 62 right now. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. 
just recently. Basil Subscribers, closed down a short position and Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an 86-hour profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. It absolutely is, folks. Uh, right now, as we come back, we got the Dow up 77 points. S&P's up about nine. Composite up 29. Small caps up uh, five and a half. We were taking a look at the uh, Euro-US dollar currency pair, looking at the 30-minute uh, chart here. That's what we're looking at on Tiger TV. You can see that the Euro-US dollar currency pair made a 1 to 2.618. A to B equals CD down, uh, completing that pattern Coming into the 30-minute uh, trading session at 9 o'clock on December the uh, 7th out there on Friday. Uh, now, it actually gave you, not only did it complete that pattern, it gave you a, a really good reversal uh, signal. It's one of those things, one of those tools that I teach in my uh, Wednesday workshops that I do for my clients. Uh, if you're just tuning in now, I'm going to be doing a, a, another workshop uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. for my clients, uh, sharing with them a indicator. It's not an indicator that I uh, use or show out here uh, during uh, during the uh, morning shows, uh, one that was created by uh, Thomas DeMarc out there. Uh, you can uh, test drive my newsletter service uh, for 30 days, unconditional money back guarantee. Just the educational loan, folks, you ought to do it for yourself out there. Maybe you don't want to read a book. Let me read all the books, which I do, and then show you different tools that folks use out there. There's a tool here that said that on that 1 to 2.618, A to B equals CD out here that uh, there's going to likely see some type of a retracement or reversal. That's what we have going on right now. We were talking about taking a look at swing points. Uh, right now, the euro has uh, made a 1.272 expansion of a set of swing points. That swing point really being at about, again, 1130 in the, not 1130, 930 in the evening on uh, December 6th out there, all the way down to the uh, low coming in at 9 o'clock session on the uh, 7th of December out there. Now, let's take a look at retracement areas. Just to give you an idea, we're going to take a look at two different retracement levels to get an idea for where the euro may bounce up to. First, we're going to come from the uh, B to, I'm sorry, the C to D leg. Uh, so it's really most significant uh, uh, swing point. That's coming into the time frame at 6.30 morning on December 6th. So if we take that all the way down to that same low on September 7th, this case here, I'll go ahead and use the black lines. What you can see is slightly above the 1.272 level is the 0.618 retracement of that area. That gives you your target range. So you can see here with the 30 minute chart with the euro being up uh, where it has fed itself from an appetite standpoint, uh, getting up into an area of resistance, just simply using Fibonacci retracement and expansion numbers. You know, it's inside a range here where it either needs to move sideways to work off that overbought uh, condition, 
or just simply pull back. Right now, all that it's been doing since that uh, 7 o'clock time frame is just simply been moving sideways out. If it moves sideways, folks, that's giving you, you know, an indication that it wants to move up higher. Now, let's go take a look at the larger retracement, the A to D retracement out here. Here's where it gets maybe a little messy on my charts. That's a red uh, 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 red uh, lines going across the screen. What it sets up is the 1.618 expansion of that first set of swing points lines right up with the 618 retracement of that full A to D leg right in about the 130, 299 level. I suspect that is where the euro wants to move. But what we have seen, even though you've got the U.S. dollar weakening and the markets moving higher, that correlation between the U.S. dollar index and the markets has been a little bit suspect here as of uh, late. So I say you want to trade each chart based on its own pattern out there. Stay tuned, folks. The Money Masters show is up next. Remember, folks, our destiny is not predetermined for us. We determine our destiny. And one thing to always remember is that you have an amazing power within yourself. And that power, folks, that is so strong, it will produce a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces, and create fantastic, loving families. Thanks so much for being a part of the TFN family. Have a great Tuesday, folks. Look forward to seeing you in a few or tomorrow morning. Take care. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.